Hello, what's going on people of the internet and welcome to your uh, some fourth tutorial in Pokemon Gate of OpenGL. So now we're going to get into doing something called a translation. So we left off last time with this program that made this square, but we want to move this square across the screen now. So we're going to call what's we're going to call translations. So we're going to call GL11, not GL translate f and what's it going to do is going to move the geometry along so let's say one we're going to want to move it just like I don't know one along the x-axis there so if we run this oh that's weird ah <laughs> right we've forgotten to do something here uh, at the top of our render function we're going to call gl11 dot gl clear gl11 dot gl underscore color underscore buffer bit what this is basically going to do is going to clear everything on the screen so that it's freed up for rendering next time so as you can see we're moving on the screen but now this is an issue this isn't how this is meant to work you know um, we want it to just translate like if we want to translate the thing 100 units it's just going to zoom off we want to translate it to 100 units and make it stop so what we're going to do for that is we're going to put a function here called that I mentioned earlier called gl load identity. No, we're not going to put that there. We're going to put <laughs> gl11 gl push matrix and under here gl pop matrix. What this is basically going to do is it's going to reset the matrix every time, not as in the matrix is in the film, the matrix. It's going to reset the matrix every single time we want to use it. So it's not going to go, I've moved this 100 units, next frame, let's move it another 100 units. It's going to say, okay, this object is currently at zero and needs to be moved 100 units. And as the same next time, it says, okay, the object's currently at zero and needs to be moved 100 units. Now let's do some rotation. Uh, so I'm just going to set up a quick variable here called int. Let's just call it time so we can use it in a number of different things. And we'll get rid of this uh, eventually. Let's call it our tick function since it's more correct. This dot time plus plus. Okay. Um, so let's, if I put in uh, here. It's going to move quite quickly, I think, but... Oh no, it's not that quickly. But you see, it's now going to move. Not because we're constantly running through it and haven't put the push and pop matrix functions, but because we're incrementing the time that value that we translate it by. Another thing we can do is rotation. GL rotate F. So it's, this is a bit weird how this one works. So let's set the angle to time, and basically we need to say which axes we want to flip it on. And as odd as this may sound, because we're doing it in 2D, we're actually going to want to flip along the z-axis. And I'm going to show you why now using my fantastic art skills. Ignore that. That's me playing around with textures. Um. Right, let's see if I can move this like into your view. There you go. Right, so basically, we have our three axes here. That's going to be Y and X. And if we're working 3D, we have Z. So if we rotate on the X axis, we're kind of like rotating in a circle around it there. And if we rotate on the Y axis, we're kind of rotating in that kind of circle. <laughs> this is a really bad drawing. Um, uh, if we're like rotating on the z axis, however, we're like rotating along it. So if you just think about the axes and like draw a circle around it, and that's the direction it rotates. So if we rotate on the y axis, it's actually going to start flipping itself around and in a 3D fashion, and same on the x axis. So we actually need to flip it on the z for it to work properly for our 2D. Um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Cancel. Just close it. Okay. 
Uh, we need to cast these afloats with the F after them. And when we run this, I said when we run this, is it building? Oh, hang on, the clip seems to have stopped responding. It's not good. Um, no, there we go. And yeah, there you go. So one thing you're going to notice is that it's going to actually be translating around the origin. And we'll get into actually rotating around the point on an object in a later tutorial. Because OpenGL will only ever do translations relative to the origin, we actually have to, uh, we actually have to, like, translate it to the origin, rotate it, and then translate it back. But because we do it all in one tick, we don't, the user doesn't actually see it doing that, kind of. Um, another thing you may notice is it may look slightly laggy, but the only reason for that is because time is an integer and not a float. So it's kind of skipping decimals, it's only doing integers. And the last one, GL scale F. Now I've never actually used this, so <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can work out what it does. So what this is gonna take for parameters is how it's gonna be scaled along each axis. So let's say we want to scale it Obviously we don't want anything on the Z, but make sure you scale it by 1.0F when you don't want anything. Because if you scale it by naught, it's going to come out invisible. Yeah, so there you go, we've actually scaled it uh, by 2 along the X and the Y axis. And if we put the variable of time into these, there you go, it's actually going to continually getting bigger. Uh, but yeah, I think that's basically all the translations. Um, I have to lead over to see the time because the sun's on my screen. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to delete this code for next tutorial. But I'm going to keep the push and pop matrix in because they're more they they make sense to be there. But I'm going to get rid of this time variable for next episode when we're going to do textures. Yes, that's right. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.